What's up, guys? I love you. How y'all doing? Have y'all recovered from camp yet? No. No. no? Who had, who took the biggest nap? I didn't take. How long was it? Twelve hours. Six hours. Six hours. Ooh, man, you beat me. I literally went to bed for like one hour. I woke up and I was fine. All right then. Well, before I get started, I would just love to pray with y'all. All right, so would y'all just bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to be in front of all these amazing kids. And dear Lord, I hope and pray, Lord, that you would just speak through me and that you would just allow me to uh, say the right thing that would just change someone's life today. Dear Lord, I love you and I praise you. Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so as I was preparing for this, I kind of thought back to about two years ago when I, first, when I recommitted my life to Christ. And I thought, man, what could I have used back then that would have helped me on my faith journey? And I kept thinking about it over and over and over again. And it was um, how to put God first in your life. Because I think that's kind of a big thing that we as Christians just throw around and we kind of get the general idea of it. But we don't honestly know what that truly means. People say, put it, put you, put God first in your life. And that's just kind of it. So my first point I would just kind of like to bring out to y'all is, hold on, give me a button. Mm. Is seeking God should be your greatest pleasure in everything you do. Now, why? Why should God be the be your biggest pleasure in your life? And I want y'all to turn to Matthew six twenty one. Give y'all some time. And it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It's a very short verse, but I think it has a lot of meaning. And the context of this is, do not lay up treasures here on earth. But that can also mean, besides material things, that can mean an abundance amount of things. Like, let's say, um, your spouse. Uh, Well, no, hold on. Give me some second on that. So really, the whole point of 621 is to just, in reality, to never put anything in front of God. I know a lot of people like to say, "Mm." I'm just going to say this, and in reality, you put God first just to get something out of him and not actually putting God first. So in reality, when you... When you put God first, that you're not putting God first to get something. You're not putting God first to... Mm, you're not putting God first just to get something out of him. You're putting God first because that's what your heart truly desires. As in the verse, for where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So if you're using God to get something out of him, like get a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a... Um, a job for some of y'all just good grades in school. Um, you're actually not putting God first. You are putting that thing in front of him. And yeah. And also I heard this quote from Denzel Washington that kind of just spoke to me a little bit on this. And it is, um, you'll never see a U-Haul behind a, a, um, Hearst. And that just kind of speaks to the point of all these things in this world that people live their lives for, like just material things and, Things that will soon come to pass, things that will you will you cannot take in the afterlife. Um, there's that one, and then on to my uh, second point: God doesn't just want to be first in your life; He wants to be in every aspect of your life. How many of y'all have heard the, um, I guess, the point of first it's God, it's your spouse, your family, and then everything else? Everyone's heard of that. Well. I don't think that's a very biblical representation of what God wants. God doesn't just want to be first in your life. He wants to be. He wants to be that number one thing in your life, but he wants to be that in every aspect of your life. So put God first in finding a spouse. Put God first in your academics, your sports, your um, your uh, just anything in your life. And for that, I want you all to turn to 1 Corinthians 10.31. And it says, 
And it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. And a little bit of context in that verse is it's just really saying everything you do, whether you, when you wake up in the morning, praise God. You did everything. He did everything for you. He's the person who got you up that morning. And just, yeah. Um, Sorry for being quiet, man. Just want y'all know. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go down to the very last one. Just don't glorify God to get the things that you want. Rather, you seek to glorify God in all pursuits of your life. And we're actually going to turn back to Matthew for that. And I just want to read Matthew uh, 6, 31 through um, 33. And it says, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whatever, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need all of them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And this verse is just talking about really, um, don't worry about all these other worldly things. If you, ha- if you are a Christian, you have truly believed and put your faith in God, he will give you all that you need. It may not be all that you want, but God will give you the necessary thing, food, water, and he'll give you more than you need. Now, I'm not saying he's just going to give you the bare necessities, water, that, and you get a shirt and a t-shirt, but he will give you more than you ask for. Um, and then I want to, uh, and also want to kind of address that, um, saying that putting God first in your life does not mean you can, you don't have to stop putting other pursuits in your life. If you want to pursue your academic career and just want to be better at school, that's fine. But what God is trying to get through on putting him first is don't put that thing in front of God. Put God first in your academics and put God first in just everything you do. Um, I really did really short on this. Uh, I guess kind of my final thoughts I want to, oh, hold on. Nope. And the reason why I point this out is because a lot of Christians seem to think that putting God first, oh, nope, sorry. And then I kind of just want to give you all my final thoughts and encouragements, my takeaway. Putting God first is not about glorifying God to get the things you want, but it's about doing the things you want for the glory of God. And really, I hate to go really short, but that was kind of it, guys. Um, let me let... I guess I can kind of... And I just kind of want to leave y'all with a little bit of encouragements before we uh, head out. And that is just, as, you, as y'all kind of come back from church camp, I know that the voice of God can kind of start to dial down. That that you're not all around camp and all the fun activities of camp. But um, just remember that the God at camp is still the same God here. Um, he will never change and he is always with you. And I just want to really want y'all to know that. Um, uh, I guess let me pray for y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for everything you have blessed me with today, Lord. Lord, again, I just thank you for this wonderful opportunity. And Lord, I hope and pray for each one of these kids, Lord, if they have not taken that step of faith in you, Lord, that you would just um, that you would just allow them to, Lord. That you would just allow them to, um, to break down in front of you and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I hope and pray for the rest of the day. I pray that you would just keep everyone safe, Lord, and that you would just uh, allow them to put you first in everything they do. Dear Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah.